Hey, Israel Nash here. Welcome to the Blues Kitchen. Israel Nash is set to release his brand new record, Lifted, on 27th July this year. For the last 10 years, Israel has made a home for himself in Dripping Springs, Texas. We discuss the enviable experience of making an album in the Texan Hill Country, performing The Weight with Garth Hudson of the band, and Israel performs a totally unique version of Radiohead's classic, No Surprises. And while you're watching, subscribe to the channel for regular episodes of The Blues Kitchen Presents. Welcome to the Blues Kitchen, yeah, How you doing? Good to be here, doing well. So, in a short while, you're going to be doing a version of Radiohead's No Surprises, right? Yes. But before we get to that, the first record you did, you were in New York by this point, weren't you? Yes. And it was very much a kind of uh, self-sufficient self-release, wasn't mm, it? Yeah. When, by the time you get to your second record, you'd picked up the interest of Steve Shelley, right, from Sonic Youth. Mm -hmm. And how did you get him involved? Was he a fan? Because he then traveled with you to upstate New York to produce that second record, yes. or co-produce. Yes. Maybe you could tell us a bit about how that came to be. My first album was, yeah, it was kind of with me. It was with a different group of people, artists and stuff. It was really the second album, the, the band and Ted, and my engineer that yep. I was talking about. That's when that kind of all came in place. And uh, Ted, um, who's done some just amazing stuff, he's like mixing the Rolling Stones right now. I mean, so yeah, Ted, uh, Ted had had known Steve and I started talking to Steve and we shared a lot of similarity in, in some folk rock and 70s music and um, yeah we I was just like do you want to come to this barn and make a record in the Catskills and he obliged so yeah yes. we got this we got this house like this old farmhouse and there was a barn on the site and I mean it was just a barn you know um, and we brought all the gear Kind of, it, it was a process, and it was really fun because I, and that's my first record was the last time I really made a full album in a studio. Like, mm. I mean, technically, my my place is now a studio, but it was inspired by these kind of barn, yeah, atmospheres. You know, um, I just got going through my head like Neil Young kind of harvest time. You know, going out onto the ranch. To be honest, the kind of thing that we would all dream of doing that kind of romantic yeah. image of you going up to the Catskills, or now you're out on the ranch in just outside Austin. You know, it's, yeah. It is. It's the stuff that kind of myths and legends and all these rock and roll stories are made yeah, of these things. It is, you know, and I, and like I was saying, it's like I know why, because there's just such a connection there to to isolation, to the land, to the countryside, I think. Yeah. Um, and that's what I discovered with the Catskills thing, and it was inspired by those ideas, like like Harvest or like the band, like Big Pink, you know, like yeah. people getting away. I just fell in love with that. and. So much that I it inspired me to want to live in the country and yeah. do that later, you know. So it's just continually been that path and realizing how much I wanted that in my life. So just before we get on to talking about your new record, you mentioned the band there and going up to Big Pink. Before we sat down very formally for yeah. this interview, you just cut, dropped into conversation that you've played with Garth Hudson from the band yeah. in Europe. Maybe you could kind of regale some of that story yeah. and how that came to be. Um, I guess, so Garth was... It was after uh, Levon had passed away, and uh, it was a Swedish festival, and my agent um, had been working with, who kind of works with a lot of like Americana and, and rock mm -hmm. artists, had been working with, with him to get him over here to do this tribute. It was kind of an idea of my booking agent. He kind of like... Orchestrated that. He orchestrated the whole thing. He was, you know, and yeah, and then I got to sing on stage in front of a bunch of people and got to sing the, the Danko line from The Wait, Wait a Minute, Chester... You know, and I totally hammed it up. You know? It's like, <laughs> come on. Was it just that one tune you did with him, or did you do a few tunes? I just did that. Um, I just did that. Man, if you're going to do one tune with Garth Hudson in the band, you do I know, I think I, I got that. I got that. That's um, brilliant. So let's talk about Lifted. Your new album's coming out yes. at the end of July. I've heard Rolling On, and it's got a real kind of psychedelic, folk rock kind of vibe going yeah. on. Very positive sounding. But the recording of that album, I mean, we're kind of talking about it before, sounds like it was a very self-sufficient, you've got your own ranch out in the country where you're doing this. And I've read that you've been out um, even recording things like rattlesnakes. Yeah. So you've been out with microphones in the grounds around your ranch or the acres yeah. around your ranch recording nature for yeah. everyone as well. <laughs> yeah. So is the album kind of a reflection of your surroundings as well? It is. You know, it's, um, it's by no means like I didn't want to use those sounds to 
overwhelm the songs, but as from the production level of just, I wanted to incorporate elements of being present and kind of capturing, yeah, my land, like the space that I work and live in, yeah. and for that to be a setting kind of for the album. So, you know, the, the whole album was kind of intended to be that kind of encompassing thing from a lyrical to a musical yeah. standpoint to things we use and the way like I kind of approach sounds and stuff. But I had this new um, intern, um, Taylor, who's since like has, has become like a crew member and is out on the road with oh, us. Oh, okay, cool. But he was uh, from a recording engineering school, and he's there. And the first week, I'm like, okay, uh, can you get on this ladder with me? Uh, we're going to climb up this tank. Um, I have this water tank. We're going to drop microphones in there. I had him running around all <laughs> over the land. You know, it's like, bang those rocks together. Yeah, just drop that big one on the other big one. And, uh, you know... Um, just walking around, like finding stuff. Storms. Get. We gotta get the the gear out. Get There's a thunder storm, on tight. You know. So it was really just finding this body of songs and kind of being excited about that, which I think you know. I think all this art and and life, like we like I, this theme I'm talking about today yeah. is um, is finding these inspirations that continue to build and and that you can share with others. You know, and uh, th that's what for me, like working in the studio and writing has, has become finding these inspirations um, for myself and to share with others, the Sounds, band and um, other people. And like a spiritual experience making a record of you I guys. like, yeah, I, th I think so. I think music is a very spiritual experience for me. And I think that a long time ago, I wanted to create music where, you know, that, that people could have a, have a space to be, you know. Brilliant, man. I mean, I can't wait to hear the, the record in full. I'm very envious as well, so maybe we'll move on to the next <laughs> of the interview. Um, but over the last few months, we've had people come in and cover Howl and Wolf and Muddy Waters, and we've been chatting about the band. We've had people cover Neil Young, Nina Simone. But when the email came over to say what you've, you've chosen, you've chosen the Radiohead tune. Yeah. So I'm really curious to know why you've chosen that tune for the session. Is it something you've learned specifically for this as well? Um, well, I've been like... I'm always trying to find like what's what are some of the cover songs I want to play this this year, you know, and that's always kind of a a challenge, you know, where it's like what's it gonna be? I mean, it's like you want to do like a deep cut, and then some people don't know what that deep cut was, and it's like yeah, you didn't know that yeah, song, yeah. like. And then the other combination was my manager. It's kind of funny. He's always like, you need to play a newer song, and what's funny is the, the song is actually <laughs> twenty, you know, yeah, years yeah, yeah. ago. <laughs> like, um, but. I just remember that album just hitting me so hard as a young young dude, you know, and just yeah. uh, being an album that I listened to, you know, like you start to finish. Yeah, I, that was a time when that came out was a time when I was starting to get into that concept of that albums are intended to be, you know, yeah. listened to and presented as a whole, and that that's those are the kind of records that inspire me to want to make records like that that people you know could be committed to for forty five minutes, hopefully, you know. So what about this tune in particular? It, what, do you remember the first time you ever heard it? Do you remember the feeling it gave you? I don't know if I remember the very first moment, um, but I remember, it, I remember it being my favorite song on, on the album, and it was that chimey, high-end picking part, you know, yeah. that is so slightly out of tune when you're trying to play with it and <laughs> learn the song that it's maddening. It's like, am I in tune? What's going on? But it sounds so beautiful all together. I mean, the production. I mean, those guys just became masters of production, too. And I think that's where they were getting into. And I think that's a place that I'm trying to understand. And it happens as you have, have a studio. And yeah. Is that you start to hear things in your head or, or hear some of your heroes. And you kind of have an understanding of how to channel that and get that to sound in a way that you want. And you have kind of a control over bringing a sound and a palette out that definitely, that didn't exist 10 years ago for me, you know, like it, it was a process and I, you know, I think that is something to look forward to. And, and I have still so much room just to continue to grow in that and, and understand that. But I think, you know, understanding the production values and using the studio as an, as an instrument and another member of the band, not necessarily leaning on that, but it's being a part of the record and the texture. And I think I love records that have that. And, Okay, computer is one of those, you know. Cool, man. I think it's time for some music, if that's all right. This is Israel Nash, and I'm going to play some uh, Radiohead No Surprises. <laughs>
Subscribe to The Blues Kitchen for live performances and interviews with the hottest blues, soul, country and roots musicians in the world today.